Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. Hey, Matt. I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Twenty-five minutes before ten o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this beautiful Monday morning. I am so looking forward to this interview. Sarah Moore is on the phone. She is an historian, uh, a researcher, and she has written a book called "Flying Colors," and it is about Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman. And I'll let her tell you about him. I wanted to say this real quickly, though. We have we have a really wonderful opportunity on Thursdays to meet some of our vets that during the veterans program that we air here, and we've been doing it now, ten maybe eleven years. So, I've I've got to meet so many guys. My own da- dad was a World War II veteran, and you wouldn't have known anything about his time in in the war. Uh, he drove a tank. My father drove a tank, but he never knew much more than that. Uh, mm-hmm. t- last few years of his life, for some reason, stories started coming out. He would listen to the radio show, and he called in a couple of times when these stories came up. So maybe that's what, what kind of sparked it. He would hear us talking about it, and he would offer his stories. And I would say on the air, wow, I've lived with my dad all these years. I, you know, <laughs> I didn't live with him all but I mean, I knew him all this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the life of a radio guy. I'm still at home at 45. <laughs> but but anyway, so, you know, you would hear these. You, you didn't hear the stories. And when I would hear them on the air, it would be like, wow, I never heard that before. And then there was a, a guy in town who must have been a gazillionaire because he bought all kinds of World War II uh, stuff. I mean, he bought tanks. He bought all kinds of stuff. And he would put on these shows. He, he'd have it all on yeah. display. All and I was, I was with my mom and dad walking through that stuff one time and one of the tanks I guess it was similar but not exactly the same as the one my father drove so it brought back all kinds of memories for him gosh what a wonderful experience uh, uh, and, and, and just going back to the guys on Thursdays here I remember so many times the guys would because I know the guys and, and they're fun and, they're, and they, they just joke around all the time every once in a while a story will come up and I'll say wow Sergeant Curley you were hit twice he mm-hmm. was injured twice. Yeah. In his case, it would have been Vietnam, right? Yes. Yes. Um, but it's just just an amazing part of our, the fabric of America, our veterans. And uh, Sarah Moore has done such a great job uh, telling us the story of Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman, and she's on the phone, and I'm wasting all of her time by telling my story. <laughs> Sarah Moore, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? You did such a really. T- this is a beautiful book. It's a touching book. It just. You have a really good heart, don't you? Thank you. <laughs> where, where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Maine. Oh, that's right. This nice. is this is all about Maine, isn't it? This is where, where, and where is um, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman? Robin said he can't be here today. He's got the flu or something. Pneumonia. Yeah, he's a, he's feeling under the weather. Oh my goodness. Okay, I hope he's doing well. How, how he's old? He's getting better. How old is he? Nine, Ninety-four. Ninety-four. Yes. He'll be 95 this November. So how do you know him? Well, um, I actually met him um, um, at my wedding about nine years ago. He's a friend of the family. Okay. And um, I didn't know he was a, a veteran until maybe two years after I met him. And he just, over time, stories started coming out of him, and he asked for some help in putting him down. Oh, oh, he wanted to write. Does he have children and grandchildren? He does. Okay, okay. So he he wanted. Uh, was it for them mostly, or was it for the rest of us? It was for him and the remainder of the bombardment he flew with. He wanted something tangible for all of them to kind of reflect on. 
Now, my, my notes say he served in the in the Pacific during uh, World War II and the Korean War. Yes. And he flew. What did he fly again? He flew a B twenty four. It was a medium range bomber. Wow, medium range. What does that mean? What does that mean when they say medium range? Well, he he flew. He could fly in low over the treetops, but he was usually about a thousand feet up okay. when they would. So they had the the fighters that would come in below, and they just take everything out in front ahead of the bombers, and then the bombers would fly in at a higher altitude and drop from drop from above. Um, somebody sent us some photographs. I just put the on the live streaming video that we're doing. I put the photo of Dirty Dora. Was that his plane? Yes, yes, it was. You, s I could hear the smile in your voice when you said that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what what yeah. what what did I hear in your voice? What what was that smile for? Uh, the name Dirty Dora. It was it was just kind of funny how she got the name. Ah, you got to share it with us. How come? Where where'd the name come from? Well, Vic inherited the plane from another pilot, and he actually met this guy when they were on leave in Sydney, and apparently he named the plane after his lady friend, who was um, rather vulgar in bed. He equated it to poetry. <laughs> It is. Good for him. Trust me, as a guy, that is poetry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. So, so, so that's pretty. That's that's pretty. Um, he must have been very close to you for him to be able to share that with you. He's like a grandfather. Yeah, but a lot of grandfathers wouldn't tell about Dirty Dora. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's a big part of that's a big part of his personality. Why does the art? Like why does the artwork look like a bat? That was the emblem of the squadron, the bats out of hell. Oh, okay, okay. You have some wonderful, wonderful photos in there, and uh, it's it's just amazing. I mean, the, you know, the the um, uh, uh, people that served back then were so young, like seventeen, yeah, yeah. even e even sixteen year olds lied about their age to get in. They were. He was eighteen when he enlisted. He was just a young guy. Do you know, I, I, you probably heard during the intro that I was mentioning the, the veteran show that we do here on Thursdays, and um, the fun part for me, kind of being a fly on the wall during those shows, is that I get to listen to them yuck it up about stuff that you don't normally see in documentaries. I mean, yeah. like Dirty Dora stories. That you, yeah. th they, they come out, <laughs> but you don't hear them in documentary stories. And you've done such a wonderful job with the book, helping us be part of that world. And, and I thank you for that. That's a very, very cool thing to, to be able to read. It's so different than uh, maybe not every other book like this, but it's than most, different than most. Thank you. I was going for nostalgia with it. I think we hit the mark. Uh, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, uh, you see all of these movies about the fellows running, the nurses there, everybody just confused, and then others going out trying to jump in their planes to, to fix something. Uh, the, the movies don't really focus on the anger, though, and that must have been a big part of him. He, he must have felt the anger. How did he suppress that to do his job? He turned it into a motivating factor. He was always very, very driven. So he, he was driven out of his anger and need for um, patriotic retribution. He focused it. Wow. I'm looking at the picture now of you, and he it looks like it's probably his living room. I, didn't know, I hope this comes across in the right uh, sense, but I can smell that room. I can, I can, I'm looking at that picture <laughs> of the two of you, and I know what that room smells like. Whatever that means, because I've been I've, I've been in those rooms. You know, is that a, is that his house or is that a facility? That's his house. That's his house. Wow, look at that that chair right there. And your hat that that hat says a lot about your personality. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think so. Who are you? I mean, I mean, tell me about yourself. How? I mean, th there's a, there's a chemistry here between you and he, isn't there? Oh yes, we had a lot of fun. There was a lot of laughing going on through the whole project. So as a historian, you don't get this chance very often to actually have the subject. And as a, and as a radio host, I'm kind of disappointed he has the, uh, the pneumonia. The pneumonia. Uh, but of course we want him to be well. It would have been nice to, to hear him speak. So, so you, you two got together and at one point did you... Okay, so you, you stepped forward as a person doing, helping him with his memoir, but it became something different. How did, that, how did becoming different happen? Um, 
it was kind of a long process. He had written down a number of his stories for his his own gratification, and he sent them to me to have them just to have my input. And as we move forward, it just sort of evolved into what we have now. We, uh, we went through reading them and talking on the phone, and it just sort of grew. Sarah, we have to take a little break, and but we'll be right back. I'm, I'm intrigued. Flying Colors is the book. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, intervals of clouds and sunshine. Watch out for a thunderstorm this afternoon and this evening. Today's high 88 to 92. Later tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 72 to 76. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with clouds. An afternoon or evening, thunderstorm around high 88 to 92. And on Wednesday, partly sunny with a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Come join New Mail Medical for their town hall at Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane, Tuesday, July 21st and Wednesday, July 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. Join renowned expert Dr. Christopher Asandra and get your questions answered. He will be discussing the importance of hormonal replacements and common misconceptions for men and women, as well as the importance of sexual health and anti-aging. Now, dinner and refreshments will be provided for those in attendance, along with door raffles and giveaways. But seating is limited, so please call today to reserve your space at the Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane. Call today, 404-4779. That's 404-4779. One more time, 404-4779. And make plans to join New Mail Medical. Cookies, 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 cookies. Wait, when you want something cookies, special cookies. and fun for any occasion, get cookies. That's right. The Great American Cookie Company in the Paddock Mall Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. You might notice that I said fun and delicious more than once. That's because I can't say it enough. The next time you're at the mall, be sure and stop by or call 352-237-2557 to place your order. Cookies, cookies, Yum. cookies, cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. The Great American Cookie Company. All right, 13 minutes before 10 o'clock. Okay, I asked our guest about herself, and I have it right in front of me. Sarah Moore is a mother, a writer, an adventurer, a sailor, a backpacker, an avid splasher of puddles. Oh, see that right there? That that hat tells me she's a splasher of puddles, by the way. <laughs> I know. That's such her, a great look. <laughs> her work has appeared in Maine Boats, Homes, and Harbors, uh, Adventure Hats. Adventure Hats? You like hats, don't you, Sarah? I do love hats. The, <laughs> the Sandy River Review, Word Legs. And Dwar Press. She writes about life and all the strange and exciting places it can take us. And you're taking us to a to a memory of of a man who served us all. And the book is called Flying Colors: S- The Story of Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman. Am I saying his last name correctly? Yes, you are. Tell me. My notes say that there's a story behind the title of the book. Um. Actually, the title of the book, I was having so much trouble coming up with a title. So what I did is I took the uh, one of the drafts of the book and I workshopped it with some uh, fellow writers. And one of my friends just, he, he read a line and it was just right there, just blaring out at us. And then when I asked Vic, he just laughed. He thought it was the best title we ever could have come up with. But he he kind of... He grumbled. He had a nice grumbling laugh at that one. Did he explain why? I mean, why? Why was it? Why was it so point? Is the word poignant, Robin? Why was it such a great title? Um, it just it resonated with him. It was pulled straight out of a, a line in one of the stories. I uh-huh. can't remember exactly which one, but it it made Vic proud. I like the fact that he just wanted to fly, loved to fly so much that he went to fight for his country and all of, all of those different missions. But we were told he was also responsible for the development of a radar countermeasures program for the entire South Pacific Theater. I mean, where did he find the time to fly and do the bombing runs and, and the uh, uh, reconnaissance and yet, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. develop this radar? 
Well, that, that's kind of interesting. He served two tours. The first tour, he was just a bomber pilot. Um, he made just. It up to, yeah, just, just. Uh, he had a lot, of, a, a lot of really remarkable adventures there. And he accidentally volunteered for a second tour. And um, oh. what that uh, is... <laughs> how do you do that? How do you accidentally volunteer? <laughs> He didn't. He didn't have his morning coffee, and he had just flown his 51st <laughs> mission. So he he was re- waiting for his return papers and deciding he was going back and forth about whether or not he wanted to reenlist. And he was there was a debriefing going on, and his um, commander said, "Who here had any um, engineering experience?" Um, back in college and he raised his hand before he knew what he was doing he says it was he says it was before he had any coffee isn't it amazing how that generation defi- defined america at that point in our in our history i mean they really did they really set the stage for every everything that followed and, and of course we've messed it up a lot since then but did, did you do you have uh, a father or grandfather somebody that was in world war ii um, I may have. I didn't actually know my great my great grandfather, who would have been the appropriate age. I know my grandfather served in Korea. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, he doesn't talk about it. He must have really had a lot of inner feelings that you helped him bring out, because uh, uh, you talk about his uh, uh, low flights during the aftermath of uh, Hiroshima and that to see that destruction from that vantage point uh, just must have been horrendous. He, when he talks about it now, his voice gets very quiet. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to not get quiet at that. It's, it's, um, we could argue about it, but it, it did end the war. So mm-hmm. I, I, it did. I think what was so astounding to him is he, his job was to bomb the entire time, drop as many bombs, destroy as much as possible. And the fact that one bomb could wipe out, just completely devastate that much was, he couldn't even process it. Did this book change you at all? It did. Um, I actually approached it not really knowing that much about World War II or the social or political ramifications of it. And just being able to talk with him about how things were before and after, I I have a much better understanding of how the world was shaped and why there are certain stigmas. Right. right. Did did he see, has he seen the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C.? Yes. He has. Okay. Yes. Were you with him when he went? No, I've only heard about it. Um, I know he's gone a couple times, and every time it's a very somber experience. Uh, we learn a lot of uh, the uh, uh, different battles in your book that aren't or part of the movies and things. And can you tell us what is Advon? Advon uh, was the headquarters of General MacArthur's chief of staff, and it would move with the front line. Uh, let's see. It also says here that uh, Vic worked in uh, the the Pentagon. Is, did, was he there a long time? That uh, it, it sounds like a guy who flies planes doesn't want a desk job. What did he do there? <laughs> um, he worked at the Pentagon after after the war. Um, he did mostly consulting and um, bureaucratic work. He he wasn't really fond of it. Uh, you uh, do have humor in your book, though, so it's not really a, a, a timeline of events. I mean, you really have incorporated uh, wonderful scenarios through him. Oh, thank you. That's what we were going for. So what is it with the hats? <laughs> do, you, do you know who you look like? You, you look like Samantha Brown. Do you know Samantha Brown from the Travel Channel? No, no, I don't. I'll no. have to look her up now. But anyway. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a very good thing. Yeah, she's fun okay. and you look fun. So what's with the hats? I, I know we're, we're talking about Vic and we'll get back to Vic. <laughs> Vic, if you're listening, we'll, we'll be back to you in a second. <laughs> um, the hats, I got the hat thing from my grandmother. She was, um, 
she always got dressed up and she just dazzled in her hats and I wanted to be like her. <laughs> uh, you have to give a lot of credit to the families of the people that actually served in the uh, World War II because they are a, a group of people that, t to me, that it seems when they get together with their um, uh, comrades, they don't mean to shut the rest of the family out, but this is something that can't really be, sh be shared except with that particular group of people that served during that time. Absolutely. Um, I don't think anyone who's not been in that situation can fully appreciate the bonds that have been formed in it. The book is called Flying Colors, yeah. and R Robin and my job is to uh, give enough information about the book so that you, the listener, goes and buys it. And, and uh, you will enjoy this one, but we haven't been fair to the book, to be honest with you. We'd be more intrigued with Sarah and, and with uh, her, the subject of the book, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman. Mm -hmm. uh, so give us uh, a story from the book that you would like to share with the listeners. I know there's many stories in the book, but do you have, like do you have one Dora. in particular? <laughs> Which one? I like Dirty Dora when she said that. That was earlier. a good story, yeah. 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 That one's that I want to know there. more. I want to I I <laughs> sit down man to man. I want to find out. <laughs> well, there, um, that story is actually in the book, and it goes further. Vic actually met Dora later in the war and told her about the plane, and she thought it was some <laughs> lovely little pinup girl and, and everything. So he took her out to go see the see the plane. He didn't tell her that um, it was named Dirty Dora for her um, poetry. Oh, she was, oh she no. was offended and marched off the tarmac. <laughs> She was? She, oh, yeah. She oh. was very offended. No, no, she wasn't offended. She was embarrassed, right? <laughs> she was yeah. embarrassed. Oh, man. But, but see, she doesn't realize that was poetry for whoever told her about this. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> is, that, is that your favorite story? My favorite story is another funny one. Um, it's, it's, it's in the book called The Tank. Uh, Vic had just finished flying a bombing run, and... Um, got a radio call from some ground troops who were um, being held up by a tank. It was um, hidden off in a barn and, and it was shelling them and they, they couldn't move forward. So the, the radio uh, went off and they asked for some help and Vic said, sure. So he flew around, found the barn that the tank was in and decimated, totally decimated this barn. It just, it fell, it fell down like kindling. Uh, the tank was quiet, and the ground troops were really thankful. They called up, hey, thanks, and Vic was really excited because he's normally up so high he can't see everything going on down on the ground. So he flew back out for a flyover sort of as a, um, as a you're welcome, and he was curious. Well, there was this giant whip antenna that stood about 20 feet in the air off of the back of the Jeep, and Vic oh. flew straight into the antenna. <laughs> really he, low. That's very <laughs> low. Wow. Yeah, he was he was so embarrassed. He he, um, he was never able to find out who who the the ground folks were to contact him to apologize. But he, wow. he ripped off the antenna off the jeep and tore up the wing of the plane and. He, <laughs> He got he got scolded by the um, wow. people back on base. Yeah, I love oh. that one. Uh, my my mom and her folks lived about five miles from uh, uh, Billy Mitchell Field in Milwaukee. That was a, a Japanese concentration camp, and also where the the uh, 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 bombers came. And my grandmother, my my mom said that my grandmother would get so mad because on the days that she was hanging out her sheets, the bombers would would fly so low that the oil from the planes would get on her sheets. That's crazy. And she'd have oh. to wash them again. And so they really did fly super low. <laughs> Coming they did. That was crazy. <laughs> um, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Tatelman, if you're listening, thank you for your service, sir. Um, what an honor it is to get to know you through this wonderful book that Sarah Moore has written. Um, the book is called Flying Colors. I have a copy here. If you, a listener, would like the, the book, uh, call me right now, 622-9622. I'll put your name on it. It'll be waiting for you. The rest of us have to go buy it. Uh, this is a great book, Sarah. Thank you so much for being on the air with us. Uh, let me give this one away and then I'll ask you how do we get the book. And, uh, okay. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Yeah, this is Jim. Jim, it'll be waiting for you right here at the station. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we got 45 seconds, Sarah. We've enjoyed this so much. Do you have a website? Yes, it's sarahmoreauthor.com. And more is spelled with two O's, right? Yes. sarahmoreauthor.com. I'm guessing the book is available wherever books are sold. Is that right? The, it's available on Amazon, and you can order it through Barnes & Noble. They inform me. Okay. All right. Uh, Sarah, good luck with everything. I didn't get to ask you what your plans are for the future, but good luck with whatever you plan to do. And uh, Lieutenant D Tatelman, thank you for everything. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Ready to go. I'm Pam Puso.